We're the chosen ones. We're gonna look at we're gonna look at old Norse. Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic, it is kind of like classics, but from the medieval period. You get the history, you get the language, you get the literature, and you get quite a lot of the archaeology as well. I couldn't decide which I preferred out of history or um, uh, literature, and ASNAC offered me the opportunity to combine both of those interests. So I was thinking of originally applying for English, and then sort of found it by mistake, because it's the first one of the perspectives and it lets you do all sorts of things like literature and language and history all together and so I thought it just seemed like the best of every world. On top of that there's the sort of uh, quite common reasons of being a little bit uh, nerdy and obsessed with Lord of the Rings and whatnot. <laughs> no, this definitely shouldn't be allowed in that because everyone will be like, oh great, <laughs> we're all just massive nerds. What I mean, it's like, we what, what it says on the team. Where is the lie? <laughs> I, I used to be a physicist and I saw the darkness of my ways. In the past we've had people who came to Asnak through goth culture, through um, reading Tolkien, through a passion for Bernard Cornwell novels. I always liked Vikings and I thought this sounds really cool and I just went for it and here I am now. Anybody should apply for Asnak who has a sincere interest in the languages or history or culture of the areas of Anglo-Saxon England, Viking Age Scandinavia, early Ireland, early Scotland, Wales, Brittany, um, the Celtic world. What makes ASNAC unique is our interdisciplinary approach to this subject. Um, just as in real life, language is not separated from literature, is not separated from contemporary history, is not separated from interacting with other people in the community. So that's exactly the way we teach. In early Britain, there were people speaking Celtic languages and Germanic languages living side by side, interacting, marrying, sharing culture and religion. The Vikings came um, as raiders and then as settlers. And so to study all of these cultures as they connect to one another in history, that's exactly the way we do it here. Here it's all open, you can do everything you want. I could just like go up to my uh, supervisor and say, I want to do some Norse. And she's like, yeah, go for it, it'll be fun. I wanted to do a degree in history and was struggling because so many of the history courses that I looked at were so prescriptive. There was a requirement to do, say, a modern history module or a certain geographical module, and I didn't like that lack of freedom. You do a history degree and you learn how to interrogate the evidence. You do an ASNAT degree and you learn how to interrogate the evidence and you learn a language that will allow you to interrogate it to the most profound degree. Um, Historians can read text in translation, ASNACs can read them in the original and therefore be more critical with their observations about primary source. It really isn't an opportunity to be able to study um, the courses, well, the, the subjects that are covered by ASNAC um, as an undergraduate within the States and I think that was probably the biggest, the biggest motivator for coming over here. Why I read ASNAC? Because if you love language and literature and you love history and you don't want to relinquish either of them, you can bring them together.